Yes, Laura. Um, I just have a question about the smorgasbord religiosity that yep. you described. I want to suggest that it may have more integrity than you. Uh, <laughs> did I just miss it? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, okay. No, all, 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 living all your smorgasbord religious. <laughs> My deep apologies. <laughs> Only because I, I okay. think there are historical currents, in particular religious traditions, that give rise to that kind of approach to religiosity, forms of Buddhism, certainly forms of Hinduism, where you know you can wander in a street in Punjab, India, and walk into a Hindu household, and you have a picture of baby Krishna next to a picture of Mother Mary. Yeah. And you ask, you know, what is this? You know, don't they contradict? And there's no contradiction. There's a sort of orientation to religion that allows one to collect gems in ways that do underlie a particular worldview and support it in a way. So, and I, I, I kind of, I like that in the United States because I think it's promising as religion's going to evolve and learn how to coexist peacefully. And I want to, I want to argue that it doesn't necessarily threaten the sort of um, uh, a religion's own self-identity. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, it's, it's a good point. Um, and, and question also is, uh, how, how does one uh, distinguish, say, between syncretistic modes of religiosity with uh, a relatively stable forms of syncretistic modes of religiosity, which have been there in many places in the world for very long periods of time, from uh, relatively fast-paced, changing modes of religiosity, of picking and choosing and crafting and kind of bricolage religiosity as one goes, goes along, right? That's one, one distinction. The other distinction, I, I think you're, you're in many ways, in many ways right that uh, the, the, it can have uh, certainly positive values and certainly it reduces tensions between religions. And that's a, that's a plus of smor smorgasbord religiosity. Uh, the possible minus might be, depending wh from where you look, is that, that generally they become a, a, a very much individualistic and they do work for the individual. The um, wh way I sometimes describe various functions of religions, I don't know whether I mentioned that, I, I think I mentioned this in, in this class, that they, tend to be, that they tend to be then either performance enhancing drugs religions, you need to achieve something, right? And then you didn't need spiritual energy to do that, right? Um, or they tend to be what I call band-aid religion. So you, you kind of walk through life, you get bruised uh, here and there, and then you, you, you need a bit of, bit of help. Or a, a kind of a, 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 um, a local wisdom for, for action. But they, they don't tend not to give you accounts of, of reality they tend not to form robust enough communities in order to, to, to resist anything and to introduce social change. They, they kind of, you, you float with them. And that may be what some people might like and may be exactly what, what's right. But from other perspective, that may be a real detriment because you, you, can't, you can't create social movement for change with these type of religiosities. Right? So it's pluses and minuses. So, sorry if I was too, Maybe dismissive of it. <laughs>